Warning. Your blood sugar is low. This is a tutorial I've put together which basically allows you to use virtual buttons and IFTTT to trigger an Alexa routine which you can then use to get your high and low sugar alerts. So it's a handy little feature which you may want to um, have set up. Okay, so now I'm on my machine, what you're going to want to do first is you're going to need to launch IFTTT. If you don't already have an account, I would get this installed. And once you go to here, the first thing you're going to want to do is go to webhooks. This is also known as make a key. At some point they changed the name. So you're going to search for the webhooks, um, click on here, and then you're going to go to settings. Now I'm going to go to screenshot because I don't want to refill my key at the same time. So I'm just going to this screenshot I've got here and it's going to take you to a page that will look like this. So the screenshot is going to look something like this, where it's basically showing your webhook or make a key, which you're going to need to copy. And then you'll be pasting this when you go to the Hiroko dashboard. There's going to be a make a key section, which you need to paste this exact key into. OK, so I'm just going to go to that in a second. OK, so I'm using another screenshot from the Hiroku dashboard because I don't want to show my um, personal keys. So what you'll find is that key that you've copied, the webhook make key, is this one. And it's got to go into here in order for these events to work. Now, some of these um, settings, I think, are very vague and not clear. So I'm going to try to explain it to make sense because this section here where it's got the the target bottom target top this is basically your blood sugar target ranges and it's going to be known as the warning ranges so when you get the warning high the warning low it's when it's above or below these numbers now you may want to change these numbers to something completely different I, i've just said it so when it goes outside my my um sort of healthy range is going to give me a warning but again you might want to change that four so maybe it's a five and and 7.9 you might want it to maybe be a bit higher it's a personal preference as to what you set this to and the bg high and low is actually referring to the urgent ranges again so i've made it if it goes above 15 i've called that an urgent high and below 3.9 is an urgent low you may want to change these again it's just an example and i've tried to sort of link um, these parts because when you've got here alarm urgent high on that's referring to the blood glucose high and when you've got the alarm urgent low it's referring to the blood glucose low and the same here for the bg target bottom is referring to the alarm low and the bg target top is referring to alarm high um, doesn't really make any logic but I suppose if in doubt just turn everything on and you can't really go wrong uh, another one here this is again is a preference where it's got the alarm time ago urgent mins this means that when you're outside of the urgent um, high or low it will wait 15 minutes and then it will trigger an alert and then it will wait another 15 minutes and trigger. So it will constantly every 15 minutes, it will keep on triggering. And the same again with the alarm time ago warn mins. Um, that is every 15 minutes as well. Now these numbers are just numbers I've set. You can make it whatever you want. You might want it to wait 20 minutes before it warns you, or you might want it to warn you sooner, or you may want the urgence to be quicker, but the warnings to not be as quick. It's again, it's, it's a preference to what you want it to be set to, but these are what I've set on my screenshot, um, which may help. You might want to sort of make notes of them. But again, it's kind of a personal preference as to what you what you set these to. OK. Right. So going back to IFTTT. Now, what you're going to want to do is create four conditions. You're going to want an urgent low, an urgent high, a warning low and a warning high. So you will need four virtual buttons in order for this to work. Um, so these are the texts which I'll put in the descriptions as what the event names. They must be called word for word exactly um, like these ones I've referenced. So I'm just going to copy this one here. 
So going back to IFTTT, we're going to need to create a condition so that the webhook will trigger a low or high warning and then it's going to then pull to virtual buttons. So we're going to go here and we're going to do create. So you do if this and you're going to search for webhooks, but now maker is now called webhooks. So you do webhooks, you've got receive a web request, click on that. This is where the event names can be one of those four which I've wrote down. So this one we're going to call it NS hyphen urgent hyphen low and it needs to be word for word exact. So if you copy and paste the text, create a trigger and then we're going to go make it so it be this. So this will also be a webhook again because that's how virtual buttons is working. So now we're going to make a web request. And I'm going to go to a screenshot now where I've already put these details in. Okay, so this is the event for NS Urgent Low, and you're going to scroll down. The URL should be the same for everyone, that's just the virtual buttons URL. The method I'm going to set to post, the content type, application, JSON, and this part, the body optional. This button refers to whichever button you want to use, so you would have purchased four buttons and for this example I've got the um, urgent low to apply to button 4 and when you're doing this make note of which button refers to which so you may have 1 as warning low, 2 as warning high, 3 as urgent low and 4 as urgent high just make note because when you then create the Alexa skill you need to remember which button is associated with which so the body is going to look like this. I've just blanked out my key because I don't want you to have that. So you would be pasting the virtual buttons key into here. And when you created your virtual buttons account, you would have been emailed um, a, a description which actually shows your virtual buttons key. So that's the part you'll paste and you're just simply changing that number to which button you'll want to actually use. So I'm just showing my phone so I can show you the routines part. Now, because I've set button four for the warning low, when I create that, I need to obviously select the correct button. So what I've done is I've given it a name, warning low blood sugar. And then the, act, the condition is when button four is pressed, time of the day, I've just set it to all the time. Although if you've got like a nine to five job and you know that you're not gonna be home between seven in the morning and seven in the evening, you may want to perhaps set a rule so that it only happens at a time when you're going to be home because if you've got someone else living with you they're going to get these reminders even if you're at work and for some reason when I make it say the commands four stops no longer works so you have to make it say two separate commands because if you just said warning full stop and then your blood sugars are low it's just going to say it as one really quick phrase I think this is a bug with um, Alexa because it didn't used to do this and then you would select which echo you want it to go to if you've got more than one Amazon echo you may want to create multiple routines so that it broadcasts on every single echo in your house or flat which is what I've done and it's really useful I'm just going to quickly play this as an example to show you um, what it's going to sound like Warning. Your blood sugar is low. And then normally what I do there is I'd either do a finger prick test or um, swipe my arm with a freestyle lever to see what it's like. Now, if you want to, you can add the sugar mate skill as well to also play. I'm not a fan of this because I find the X strip doesn't seem to be that accurate on most times. It may just be I haven't configured it correctly and some of you may have a different opinion so now what I've done is I've got it so it will say a warning and then it will say sugar mate now my sugars aren't actually low at the moment so when it says the reading it's not going to say a low reading um, but it's still going to um, still going to say the reading so let's just play it again warning your blood sugar is low your sugar level is 5.0 and falling very fast last checked five minutes ago so that way now you've got a warning 
it will tell you whether it's low or high and then it also tells you your sugar levels so for some of you that may be a cool feature but i i kind of use x strip as as like a compliment as long you know so you still do your finger prick test you use the freestyle libra and it's really just for the high or low and then i would do a check afterwards so if you want to have sugar mate opening afterwards you may want it or you may find um it just becomes a bit annoying if it keeps on nagging you now this next part is optional if you're happy with the setup and the way it works then you can just stop this video this is purely an extra step i've taken where i can make it so that the high and low warnings will only happen if you're home and if you leave your flat or home they won't go off so it's like an extra little feature so for those of you who want to make it a little bit more fancy and this is probably an overkill but what bugs me is if I leave my flat and someone else is at home and I get like a warning high, warning low, urgent high, urgent low, all my Alexas are going to continue to keep broadcasting even though I'm not home, which is a bit of a pain. Okay, Most of you are probably not going to be too fussed, but I just think it's annoying that if I'm out or it's a weekend and I'll just pop out for a few hours and someone's at home, they're going to keep getting nagged for something that is irrelevant for them. So what I've done is instead of IFTTT um, automatically sending a webhook to virtual buttons to trigger the Alexa routine, I've got IFTTT so it goes to a webhook here, which is this part. And what's happening is my is this part you see here, I've got Node Red is constantly pinging my mobile phone because what I've done is using my home router. I've set a DHCP reservation so that my mobile phone is always going to be the same IP address. So here it's constantly pinging my mobile. And then if my mobile phone gets a ping, it's got an if true, then this I am home variable becomes true or false. And that's how it knows if I'm home or not home. Now I used to have it where if false, um, this part you can see how it's not linked. Because the problem I'm having is um, if I leave my phone on a table for five minutes and don't touch it, it stops accepting ping requests. So it's going to think I'm not home when actually I am. So I've left it. So as soon as it pings my mobile, it's going to set I am home to true and then it will never change it again. It will just leave it true instead of it knowing I'm not home. What I've done is I've got a IFTT trigger where if I leave a GPS location it will automatically send a webhook which will go to here which will then say Dave is away or I am home is false which you'll see here it's this, it gets this payload where it's saying away and it then knows I'm not home which is one way of doing it because when it gets these webhooks, which is either going to be the urgent low, urgent high, or the warning low and high or way, what happens is you've got these four process flows, which relates to the lows and the highs. And it will run it once, and it will wait 20 minutes before running it again. But it also has this, um, it's looking here to see if I am home is true or false. So then if, it's, if I am home equals true, then this will run. So if I leave my flat and I get a lower high, the Alexas aren't going to work. But if I'm home and it can ping me, then it knows I'm true. And then it will broadcast um, to the virtual button. So it will send the virtual button webhook, um, which would normally happen through IFTTT. But I've tried to make it a bit more fancy where instead of IFTTT triggering virtual buttons, it's going to trigger this, um, this webhook and it knows if I'm home as to whether to make the Alexas actually broadcast the alerts. Now, a lot of you may just think this is well over the top. Now, there is one more last step, which I'm trying to resolve as well, which I'm kind of relying on someone to help me, is if I have something to eat, the chances are within the next two hours, the blood sugars are going to go slightly above the target range. Um, and I know they're going to be, that's just kind of expected. And it can be annoying that the Alexas are then going to trigger a warning high or an urgent high when, to be honest, I know they're going to be high. 
but then within two hours they're naturally going to drop. So it would be cool if there's some snooze function where when I've eaten something, I could also trigger some another webhook where I could say, Alexa, I've just eaten, and then something in this process flow would somehow stop the high and the um, and the high urgent and the high warning where for two hours they won't run because I kind of know they're going to go up. So in the future, I might modify this process flow to add some kind of a snooze feature when I've eaten so that it doesn't run. But um, I'm sort of struggling to figure out how that works because I, I would still want it to warm me if I went low, but just not warm if I went high after I've eaten. Now, if anyone wants me to export this process flow and, and send it to them, if they want to sort of figure out how I've done it and, and tweak it, I'm happy to send them a copy. I'll just have to slightly edit it so it removes any passwords. But I'm kind of hoping there's someone out here that knows how to use Node Red and is able to make this process flow a little bit more intelligent than the way I've ran it. Now, those of you who are going to go down the Node Red route, where it's um, working so it knows if I am or aren't at home, you'll need to change the, the maker event. So it'll still look for the NS warning low and high and urgent. But what you'll need to change is the webhook request, because what it does now, instead of it pulling the virtual buttons, what it's doing now is it's pulling a webhook. That is one of the services I've signed up with. You may know your own. And then what it does is the body, this needs to be word for word. It's either going to, so for a warning low, it's going to use W low um, for warning low and W high for warning high and U hyphen high and U hyphen low. So these bits are slightly different um, the way they work. So if you have used the node red process flow, one thing you will want to change is going back to the Heroku uh, software. You'll want to change these alarm alerts, this one. Um, I just set it to one because you want it to trigger immediately this time because now it goes through node red and then the frequency of how often it happens is done through node red instead of through here. So even though it says it's every one minute, node red was set to 20. So you'll still only get the alerts every 20 or 15, whatever you set it to. But you just want it here to be as low as number as possible and allow node red to adjust the frequency of how often it runs.